It's Kaylee here with you. And a survey of drivers suggests there's widespread dislike of cyclists. I'm, I don't know if the cyclists have been surveyed, by the way. So this may well come straight back the other way. But over 12,000 drivers took part in this survey. And one in three told the BBC that cyclists shouldn't be on the road, which... That feels quite strong, or, or is it? Maybe you have that view. We'd love to hear from you. 0800 389 7321. And the worrying stat here is a quarter of drivers admitted driving too close on purpose, which I think I'd like to think here in Norfolk, we're, we're quite safety minded. You know, we like to look out for each other. So, I mean, have you done this? And be really honest. I mean, I can I can keep you anonymous this morning. I mean, have you done this? Do you, and do you get wound up on the roads? Because I think you, you see people and, and they can be the calmest people in the world and they're probably the person I mean if you're working right now it'll be the person around you you least expect and as soon as they get behind a wheel oh that's like they transform isn't it and maybe it's you and maybe you recognise in your, this in yourself where you get behind a wheel and suddenly everything is suddenly very annoying at the same time but I'm trying to come up and, and look I, d- I don't want to do the whole cars versus bikes thing because I think it, I mean it's 2022 isn't it you know we've been having this debate for ages I, d- I don't think it's helpful but can we meet in the middle here can we come up with a compromise uh, and, and I'm suggesting you know we're going to make a book this morning of just the highway code on how to get along with each other so uh, if there's one thing just so we can get on and it's not they do this they do that like some genuine safety minded rules here just so we're all on the same book we're all on the same page and we're all doing this to help each other what what would you add what is the one thing you think could be improved and when it comes to cycling here in our wonderful wonderful county where is good to go what roads do you tend to use and um, and if i could just give you you know one place and you can only allow to cycle on one road for the rest of your life i mean what what would you pick here in the county oh eight thousand three Three two one triple three to WhatsApp me. Just make sure you start it with Norfolk. Or maybe there's places you kind of avoid, you don't feel safe. And what would make you feel safer? Well, let's catch up with Peter Silburn from the Norwich Cycling Campaign and joins me now. Peter, good morning. Good morning. So tell me first of all about the Norwich Cycling Campaign. So so, so what, what is the work that you do? Well, we're essentially trying to improve facilities for people who get about by bike. Um, and really that comes down to one thing, which is uh, better infrastructure for, for people on bikes. Because as as you've highlighted there in, in your intro, um, there is a, a potential of a conflict between different road users. But um, rather than focusing on the individual conflict really what we need to be doing is sort of um, reducing that in the first place and and one way of doing that is actually creating safe space for people on bikes so that you don't have to interact with uh, you know lorries and and cars driving driving fast Um, it's the way that they do it in countries like the Netherlands where they have you know many more people cycling than here so um, you know if if there's one thing that, that we would like to see it's better infrastructure. And this is it. Cause, I mean, it's 2022 and we're still having this debate and, and, you know, maybe us in the media probably to blame for, for exacerbating this debate over the years. But I think it's a good point because we, we always often say, you know, how do we share the road? But actually, if you if you put the infrastructure there to separate, I guess it, it kind of makes that whole argument irrelevant, doesn't it? Well, well, essentially, yes. I mean, I think to go back to the... Uh, the program. Obviously, I haven't seen the the program tonight. Now, but I think the uh, as you've alluded to yourself, the the title itself is is a little bit unhelpful. Uh, it kind of creates animosity and conflict when it isn't really there. Um, you know, I mean, uh, it's not a question of cyclists versus drivers. I mean, most people who cycle will drive, and vice versa. I mean, I I I, I ride a bike sometimes, and I drive a car sometimes. I don't think of myself as as one or the other. Um, I just try and avoid conflict uh, wherever I am so um, but um, and I think yeah I think I think <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've not to say I've not seen the program but uh, from what I've heard there are some good bits in it but unfortunately um, these programs do tend to sort of perpetuate this, um, this, this and actually create this problem um, and you know the question is if you're out and about on your bike are you going to feel safer you know, tomorrow morning after this programme has been broadcast. Um, that's a question perhaps you ought to be asking yourself. 
Yeah, and and when you're on your bike, I mean, how how safe do you feel in Norfolk, and and do you feel hated at all? <laughs> well, that's that's a good question. I'm I'm fairly new here. I moved here from an area um, where there wasn't so much much cycling. So so not well. I think there's a difference between Nor- Norwich and and Norfolk. I would say as a newcomer, Norwich itself for a UK city isn't bad for cycling. Um, there's quite a lot of people cycling. Um, arguably, uh, it's in spite of the infrastructure rather than because of it. Um, there are some good bits of infrastructure in Norwich, but there needs to be much more. I do find personally cycling in the countryside a little bit hairy. Um, the country lanes uh, are quite narrow and there isn't really any any infrastructure there. There aren't many off-road uh, cycle paths uh, and I do find some of the drivers do drive too fast and too close and it feels a bit scary. So it does put me off. So uh, I'm one you might consider an experienced cyclist and if I feel like that then uh, you know what do what, what does an ordinary person feel? <laughs> They're not going to be uh, encouraged to get out on their bike if their conditions are like that. I know. We, I mean, we've had more people on bikes in the UK that probably at any point, especially the last couple of years. And and I think that's. I reckon that's quite encouraging. But I mean, when you compare it sort of internationally, when I mean, you sort of mentioned, you know, the Netherlands earlier, where we've got sort of one one in four people are are, are cycling. So, so what are the main lessons? Do you think we we can learn from those countries? Well, uh, essentially, it comes down to infrastructure. I, I've cycled quite a bit in the Netherlands, both both in the cities and in the countryside, and and it's quite a revelation, really. Uh, people cycle everywhere, and people of all ages. That's the key thing. In this country, the sort of stereotypical cyclist does tend to be a sort of a fearless uh, young person, uh, head down on with, you know, wearing certain clothing. But in the Netherlands, everybody cycles. You get you know elderly people, young children, who can cycle on their own pretty much everywhere because there's there's infrastructure there. So so that means that you can cycle out into the countryside. Um, you know, just, just go on your bike and go. Um, so that, that that's what we need. And when it comes, I was trying to make a rule book this morning of just, you know, this is how we're going to compromise here, rather than pitting us together against each other. You know, if we could mm. all do this, then maybe we can get on a bit better. So, I mean, what, what, what would be the one thing, I mean, as a driver or as a cyclist, that what would be the rules that, that you would put into this book this morning, well, just, just to make I mean, it easier? I, I you know, I, 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 I come back to what I said. I mean, I, I think, you know, the rules are quite good. I mean, if everyone followed the rules, Particularly, I mean, let's go back to where the source of the danger is. Uh, that that's with 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 motor vehicles. I mean, that's where the danger comes from. Uh, it's not from cycling. I mean, uh, so it's it's the and the highway code changed recently with the hierarchy of road users a sort of responsibility. So uh, you know, if, if you're if you're causing more danger than someone below you, as it were, in the hierarchy, then it's your responsibility to take care. So the highway code is quite clear on this. That if you're if you're driving a you know a, a lorry, you need to take you know more care than if you're driving a car, and more care than if you're riding a bicycle, and so on. So you know because you're you're the source of the danger. So uh, I wouldn't necessarily want to say oh, we need a new law that says this. I just think if people follow the existing law. Uh, and particularly on, on, on speeding. I mean, it's well known speeding is, is a major contributory factor to, to every road fatality, uh, whether it's, you know, whether it's drivers or pedestrians or cyclists or anyone. So if people obey speed limits, that would be fantastic. If, if overnight everybody obeyed the speed limits, that would be fantastic. It must be annoying when you're driving and you see a cyclist do something that, that is quite dangerous. And you probably, I guess you probably just go, oh, no, you're giving us a bad name. Don't do that. Because I think, and as I said earlier, you know, there's, there's a small minority of all road users, whether it's cars, lorries, trucks, buses, you know, horses. There's going to be a small minority, isn't there? Yes. Well, it's, I mean, there's idiots everywhere, of course. And you see idiots on bicycles, you see idiots walking down the pavement. I mean, obviously. But um, again, it comes back to what I say. If you're an idiot walking down the pavement and you trip over and fall over, you don't like to hurt yourself. It's a bit similar on a bicycle. You say you're in a car and you see a dangerous cyclist. Well, what does that mean? I mean, you know, the cyclist isn't going to cause you any danger. Uh, but as a car driver, you you know, as it's been it's been said that for for most people, driving a car is the only time in their life when when if they make a mistake, they could kill someone. You know, you don't you don't often come across that situation in life. But when you drive a car, you know, that, at any time you you make a slight mistake, you could kill someone. So so it's down to you if you're in control of a motor vehicle 
to to take responsibility and, and, and to look out for the danger that you're causing. And when it comes to cycling in Norfolk then, so I, I'm asking sort of the, the best place to cycle. So if I could just whisk you away right now, Peter, and, and pop you on this best cycling route in Norfolk, what, what what's it going to be? Well, that, I, I think, I'm, as I said, I'm still fairly new to Norfolk and I'm still ex- exploring it. Um, I have to say the countryside, um, there are many places, as I said earlier, uh, and it's a shame that the coast coast line isn't isn't better equipped now. I, I came from from the southeast where there's lovely cycle routes all the way along on the, on the south coast there. And that's some of the most, most lovely places to cycle now. Norfolk, due to its due to its geography, <laughs> uh, doesn't kind of have that. I think because of the uh, the coastline is rather rather sandy, you can't really build much on there. So there aren't many cycle routes along along the coast. Um, so. Uh, failing that, of course, the next best place is cycling along, along the river. And um, mm. there are some bits along the river, Benson, that are quite nice to cycle along. But, um, but, but in Norwich itself, it's, it's quite, a, quite a decent city to cycling. But as I say, it does need to be, does need to be a, lot, a lot better. Ah, amazing. It's lovely to catch up with you, Peter. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Peter Silburn from Norwich Cycling Campaign. And uh, I know we, we've been hearing from the Department for Transport who say uh, about the changes to the highway code that continue to improve safety for cyclists, pedestrians and horse risers. We've driven awareness through our award-winning Think Campaign, a working group of key organisations established to help ensure the changes work for all road users and to support us in communicating the changes more widely.